following is a production of Cary TV, the town of Cary's government access channel. Good evening, I'd like to call to order our January 14th meeting of the Cary Planning and Zoning Board. Uh, we have a limited agenda tonight and um, I would uh, first of all like to accept the or adopt the agenda, but I believe we have a couple modifications at applicants request. We've had a couple of cases pulled. So uh, I'm wondering if I can have a motion to amend the agenda. Yes. Mr. Chairman, I move to amend the agenda by uh, striking uh, two items, item um, D1, 12 REZ 20, and item E1, 12 REZ 24. Thank you. Do we have a second? Second. Discussion? All those in favor of the motion stated, please say aye. 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 Uh, opposed? That motion carries unanimously. Next, we need to approve our December 17th regular meeting minutes. Do we have any uh, corrections, additions? There being none, can I get a motion to approve? I'll move that we approve the, um, the meeting, uh, December 17th, 2012 meeting minutes. We have a motion and a second. second. We have a motion and a second. Discussion, all those in favor of the motion as stated say aye. Uh, aye. aye. Um, that brings us to um, our primary item of business for tonight, and that is uh, LDO text amendments round 24 related to adequate public facilities planning um, and development for roads ordinance. And Mr. Alma, we, we don't very often get the boss presenting to us, so this is you kind just, of a special You're just lucky night. tonight. The um, item for consideration this evening um, was uh, presented to town council last week at a public hearing. Uh, Planning and Zoning Board, remember, doesn't conduct public hearings on text amendments. And um, we just, uh, as you know, came out of a work session and having uh, reviewed this particular topic to be, get you more familiar with it. But we'll go through the presentation and uh, point out some of the comments and uh, considerations that we've been hearing um, as these amendments have started to move forward through the consideration process. Um, the land development ordinance, our LDO, was amended back in 1998 and had a uh, set of ordinance provisions with a long name that we now call the Roads Ordinance. And um, this set of regulations works together with our 
um, transportation development fee system, so the impact fee system, which we have statutory authority for, and our comprehensive transportation plan requirements. So the LDO stipulates that as development occurs along a roadway or with a roadway identified on our transportation plan, the developer is responsible for making those particular improvements. And we're doing all of these things to make sure that uh, our community has adequate facilities um, for the transportation network. Uh, back in December, uh, the town council called for a public hearing to consider these um, potential amendments um, where we would look at repealing uh, the main body of the roads uh, ordinance and then make some other related text changes um, to be able to continue to address this particular issue. And the reason for this change comes from a North Carolina Supreme Court ruling um, that was issued last summer uh, known as Landvale versus Cabarrus County. And the, uh, our highest court um, started looking at some of the zoning or statutory authority that we have for zoning regulations and has questions uh, or has uh, shifted sort of the, um, the judicial view on what our authority is uh, under zoning. And so we're working to respond to that case. Um, and we've pointed out to you in the past that not only this is the first piece of legislation that we would be moving forward in response to this case, but waiting in the wings are other LDO changes that we would be looking at um, that might fall in this sort of the same um, category. Um, to describe how our existing system works first, that way you get a feel for what the changes would do. Um, we now require a traffic impact analysis, um, also often just called traffic study. Um, that's done for certain rezoning cases and or if uh, somebody is moving forward with a development plan, either subdivision or a site plan. Um, the ordinance specifies the geographic area that's studied for those traffic impact analyses and um, that base is based on, we have a couple of zones in town, so depending on which zone you're in, depending on the scale of the project, the intensity, the trip generation, um, then the um, a nature of the study varies depending on the particular case. Um, our system has long included an arrangement where the town has traffic consultants um, on retainer. They work for the town. These studies are done when an applicant says, I'm ready to move forward. This is the gist of my project. We get generate a cost estimate and then the applicant pays 90% of that and the town pays 10% and then we have the benefit of that data um, for other work um, as we would move forward with that. The ordinance specifies as um, adequacy ordinances do a level of service standard. So you have uh, different levels of A, B, C, D, E, and F and uh, the ordinance um, lays out what our requirements are for being able to maintain or uh, to uh, to at least maintain the level of service that's um, already identified. And then as part of that, the study will identify uh, transportation improvements, often again referred to as mitigation for that impact um, for each particular development. And that information is available if it's done at a rezoning stage, it's available for rezoning decisions. More likely if it's done at site or subdivision, um, then it gets considered there. And at that point, a certificate of adequacy um, could be issued. And the ordinance spells out what one does if you go through this process and you're looking at a set of improvements. Um, an applicant, a developer could either say, well, um, I'm going to delay my project. Um, the nature of the improvements or the timing isn't going to work. And then if the town may have a capital project at some point or NCDOT may make an improvement, that's an option. Another would be to say, I will move forward with my project and identify and do the construction and those, those improvements to maintain that level of service. Um, there's a provision that allows a shared arrangement. So someone could say, well, I'm willing to go to a certain level if the town might participate in a capital project and can we come up with a partnership uh, situation so that we could fix and remedy the issue. Or I could even consider scaling my project down or doing it in phases perhaps um, in order to be able to best address um, the outcome of the study and how to move forward with development. 
The intent of our amendments are to respond to that court decision and the council's request. And our point here is that we expect this, this is an alternate and an interim set of provisions because there is other work that we need to do um, that would be able to put us in a position to be able to generate a new uh, permanent approach to this. Um, so we know full well going in that this is temporary and our best guess is that we would be targeting a set of improvements, changes to all of this, uh, the, the, you know, sort of the final version, say by midsummer, um, July 1 target, and um, that's where we hope to go um, at this stage in the game. So the amendments encompass five areas, um, and I'll go through those one at a time and then give a sense of what the outcome of those changes would be. Um, the first is to repeal um, the roads adequacy ordinance um, as it now exists and as it now applies at the subdivision and site plan stage. So 3.23 in your text is, is stricken. And then what that means is that uh, the town's ability to test adequacy at that stage of the development process goes away. However, um, as a sort of adjustments and thinking about the overall effect of this. Um, one of the requests was to consider looking at requiring more of the um, traffic information and traffic study to be handled at earlier in the development stage at our rezoning time. So we would shift under this set of changes in section 341, uh, traffic study requirement to the rezoning stage of development. Um, we would eliminate or propose to eliminate an optional form of a traffic study known as a screening study that was done and it was uh, originated with the Alston uh, mixed use activity center concept plan some years ago and it was set up as a way to anticipate if we ever did anything like that again in the future, you might do a generalized study rather than a detailed traffic study like we do for specific development projects. But at this point, staff doesn't see the need to retain that. So we would say eliminate that option and just require a traffic study. And we would continue under this rezoning traffic study situation or set up to uh, use our consultants and the same um, mechanism for sharing the cost with the private developer and, and the town. Um, one of the things related to this aspect of it is to consider lowering the situation or uh, increasing the, the, the level of scrutiny or lowering the threshold for when traffic studies would be required for rezonings. And um, as we now apply the ordinance as it's now spelled out, a traffic study is required if you generate or would the zoning, the new zoning would propose to generate 50 net new trips. In this case, it would just be if the proposed zoning generates 50 trips period, then one would require to do a traffic study as part of your rezoning application. And we point out here and uh, noted this to council and to the board that there are certain land uses that folks um, need to know do not require rezoning. So thinking, sitting here thinking that, well, when a religious, large religious institution that's a campus-like uh, uh, setting is gonna come in and we'll be able to then consider the traffic impacts of that particular project during rezoning, you won't get that opportunity because the zoning, uh, our existing zoning districts allow certain uses like these by right within that district. So there is no rezoning, so you wouldn't get the traffic study then. And then without a traffic study requirement for a site or a subdivision plan, just know that you wouldn't have the next stage wouldn't be addressing that either. But this is another point of uh, uh, another area where we would be looking in the permanent um, solution, how we might address that, that particular issue, if it's an issue for people or not. The result of this is that um, during rezonings, as the board knows, you have a lot of uh, guidance in the land development ordinance in terms of the considerations you can take into account on whether or not to uh, approve or recommend approval or denial to council. And so staff's suggestion is you would just use those existing criteria um, in section 1.3 and 3.4.1e and you would have the benefit of traffic information as part of an expanded study or report that you would get, a staff report on a rezoning, and then you would be able to weigh in and weigh and evaluate then um, 
the proposed rezoning on the traffic network in addition to all the other things and then make a consideration there at a rezoning on whether you think it's an appropriate uh, zoning rezoning proposal or not and then likewise council would get that recommendation the third set of changes relate to what happens with subdivision and site plans now um, the suggestion here is that we would add another category council already has four there are four types of site or subdivision plans that council already can review in a quasi-judicial hearing. For instance, if somebody wants a waiver or a reduction of parking or buffering in the ordinance, it already stipulates that you can ask for that, but that goes to council for a review. And so here, um, staff suggested that another category be added, that when you have projects that um, generate a, a particular level of traffic um, in the interim, then we would suggest that those site or subdivision plans might go to council for review. And these would be in the residential area, uh, subdivisions or, or uh, other developments that would be on five acres or more, or non-residential would have two categories, 10,000 square feet of floor space um, or a drive-through facility. Um, in terms of numbers, we looked at, staff was asked to look at sort of the scale of how many of these plans are out there and what the workload might be. There were 26 such plans that fell into these categories in 2012, out of, and that was about a third of the total number of development plans um, that were approved by the town. So those would be moved into that council consideration level rather than administrative if um, these were the thresholds that were recommended for this. And um, while doing that, you then need to know what am I evaluating this information against, and a new criterion is recommended to be added that says that the plan would ensure that the demands wouldn't exceed the capabilities of existing or already funded capital improvements for streets, utilities, or other public uh, facilities and services. So the result is that the transportation aspects of some subdivision and site plan proposals could be evaluated and you would do it under existing ordinance structure um, that you have in place today. Finally, the other major change deals with uh, what happens with either prior approvals or that have been approved in the, in the recent past or something that may just be getting ready to start or was just submitted last week and then now we may consider changing the ordinance. What are the implications for that? And so the suggestion here is to also create in a quasi-judicial uh, arrangement an appeal or relief mechanism for certain plans, already approved or pending plans, that it were approved over the past two year period, but they've not moved forward. So they were operating, they met the existing ordinance requirements um, and their site or subdivision plan still valid and they have the opportunity to now move forward if that plan hasn't expired, then they would have the ability um, to um, request of council relief from requirements under the old ordinance that might not be required if they were coming forward under the changed ordinance in the future. And uh, council could consider granting that relief for particular road improvements for those projects, um, not ones that are required for some other ordinance requirement. So if our transportation plan would already require roadway widening and improvements along the frontage, that one wouldn't be eligible. But for instance, an improvement at an intersection uh, that was studied further down the road, then that one would be um, potential. But um, relief could not then create situations where um, you would obviously create unsafe situations uh, for motorists or emergency service access, those kinds of things. So it kind of moves it more, or a capacity infrastructure need, it kind of moves it more to a safety consideration than not, and that would go into that uh, discussion for council. And the result would be that because of a change um, in ordinance and rules of the game have shifted over time like they often do, um, we made sure that we at least tried to address that situation um, as best we could. And finally, the other amendments just deal with section 323 references throughout the code. So where we referred to it, maybe in a site or subdivision that's gone, then you have the ripple effect of making a change in one section of the ordinance and you have to track it out 
um, sort of the tentacles out into the rest of the code. The proposed schedule was established um, so that council could be in a position um, to review this again at their second meeting um, this month. So tonight um, we're here with you for your opportunity to make a, a recommendation to council and staff have suggested sort of a delay in the effective date so we have a little time to whatever changes go into place we would suggest. Um, delaying that so we can time it and target it and folks could remember what that date is. Um, at the public hearing last week with town council and via other correspondence, phone calls, emails, staffs uh, compiled this list of input or comments on the proposed changes for you. Um, several speakers have uh, and, and comments have been relating to the schedule of events. So we again set it up so that, you know, this is as quick as you could go, this is what the schedule could be. It could always take longer um, to be able to work it through. There were requests that we, as you would, if you would consider slowing it down, that perhaps just talking with stakeholders affected by this and figuring out a way to get more dialogue um, at this stage might be something that would be worth consideration. Um, speakers say, in, as with any change we make to an ordinance, as you think about one thing, what are the unintended consequences of tweaking language or changing a process and have we thought through all of the uh, contingencies there? The suggested threshold for sending site or subdivision plans to council for review um, has been viewed as too restrictive. Um, coupled with that, um, taking having such plans go to council would add, or the, the, the criticism would, is that it would add uh, additional time to the process and that that then translates into business and economic uh, development, business attraction um, issues, if that's a consideration that folks want to account for. Uh, everybody agrees that today it's complex and it's still complex and that understanding how all this fits together um, is important. Um, as we continue even now and on into the permanent ordinance, we definitely need to, suggestion was to specify sort of as we think about the overall intent and the goals and objectives of this system and our reg associated regulations, let's make sure we know what we're trying to accomplish. And then there are some others that deal with the actual, hmm, how will this work um, if I, under the new ordinance, come in and do a rezoning as suggested here, and deal with and address, do a traffic study, go through a rezoning case, get approved, then does my site plan, subdivision plan, still end up having to go through the process again if I'm one of those uses that's identified for quasi-judicial council review. That one um, has some, I mean, we do need to think about that, um, depending how long this stays in place as an interim ordinance. Um, we didn't spend a lot of time with it, probably because we were thinking that we may, somebody may never even get through. It takes several months to go through a rezoning case anyway. We may not have these interim provisions in place and we may never get to the point of ever having to figure out if this is truly an issue, but we probably do need to think about it just in case. So staff's recommendation is that you review these amendments and give your recommendation on how to proceed um, to the town council and Mr. Chairman, I'll turn it back over to you for questions and or um, your discussion. And again, it's not a uh, public hearing on this item. Thank you, <clears throat> Thank you Mr. Alma. I will uh, first of all point out that we spent the, the last hour um, reviewing this. So uh, you shouldn't assume that, that members of the board haven't already asked some questions and probed into this thing, but I expect we still have some additional questions. So I'm gonna open it up um, do we have any questions? Yes. Oh, good. I didn't want to be made a liar there. <laughs> uh, this was answered um, at the work session, work session a little earlier, but I'd like to just bring it out uh, at the meeting. As I understand it, and correct me if I'm wrong, the present ordinance uh, requires uh, that we have a certificate of adequate public facilities for roads. And it's an absolute requirement that if the level of service is below a certain point, depending on the zone that it's in, that it cannot proceed 
beyond a certain point, lighter in zoning, but it can't be built. Right, basically. you would then fall under those options of once you right. know that, how do I move forward either making the improvements but, or not or scaling it back, right? But part of the change of this is that it would become discretionary, not a hard requirement that it not be built if it's below a certain level, but that council would be given information and would be able to make the decision. Correct. So now you, you've sort of stepped back to a level in the, in the planning and zoning world where you're making more of a legislative with more discretionary um, decision making, w with more discretion, a decision making process that has that capability. <coughs> so our example was um, earlier was it's not unlike other kinds of issues that you would deal with, um, you know, stormwater or transportation or whatever. You have that ability to weigh um, the proposal, zoning conditions that may be offered by the applicant to address particular issues, and then the board and the council has the ability to, to throw those into the mix in the evaluation decision <laughs> process and decide is this, does this rezoning um, should this be rezoning approved or denied based on what's being presented to us, you know, at this point in time. So it's a different, it's a kind of a different threshold or a different test um, for that part of the process. Mm -hmm. And then also um, for the actual transportation impact analysis or traffic study, the um, you will find some way where that can be more easily accessed by the board members, council, and members of the public, either through something online, website, or some other form, uh, but easier than it is now to get a copy. Yes, and so we've gotten that plan. request, so we'll look at ways to provide that, and, a, and our expectation would be that um, as we would develop the procedures for under this, under this new ordinance, we would then have to be looking at maybe the nature of the staff reports you get, the information we provide, different summaries, different information than perhaps that we're, we're doing now, because you could, usually, you could rely on, on the fact that, well, the traffic aspect would be addressed later in the development process again uh, through, a, through the traffic study, through the site and subdivision plan. You won't have that benefit, so we're gonna also have to move information up into that earlier decision-making process. So we'll be looking at ways to get that information out to all decision-makers and interested folks in the process. Including the, uh, the full traffic study as presented by our consultant. Yeah, we could look at seeing how we could get that info. Lots of people may not want to read it, so a summary would be there, perhaps with a link to that document. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Other questions? I'd like to make a motion. Um, I will move that we forward, and I'll follow up with an explanation of the motion if it gets a second, but um, I'd like to m recommend that we move forward LDO text amendments round 24 um, with the exception of section 3.9, finding that it's consistent with our comprehensive plan and all other applicable plans and is reasonable <coughs> and in the public interest for the reasons set forth in the staff report and presentation. Michelle, just to be clear here, um, because the, we can get confused with numbering, mm -hmm. would you be specific about what 3.9 is? Yes, 3.9 addresses the evaluation of transportation service demands of subdivision and site plans reviewed by council and expanding the types of plans reviewed by council. Do we have a second? I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Discussion, please. So um, I had several uh, um, concerns with this section. Um, one is that if it's the intent of this section to be temporary, the verbiage and the language in that section should reflect that, and it doesn't. Um, the other thing uh, is no, council will look at something slightly different than what we look at because they have their retreat coming up and because they will undertake a discussion on process 
And so I'm not comfortable putting forward a recommendation to them about this, not knowing what the outcome and what the look and feel of that discussion is going to be um, and how the process itself may undergo other changes um, that could have an impact on this. Other points? Ms. Oh. Best, you, you seconded. Do you have something you want to say? Um, I, I just want to thank you, Jeff, for the presentation. It, it was uh, maybe third time's a charm, but it seemed a lot more clear even than an hour ago. So I appreciate thank you. that. But I agree with um, Michelle. I'd like to see a little bit more from um, council on the how it's going to be proposed. Um, I'll say I'm going to oppose the motion. Um, I think staff's recommendation in our work session was that we treat these as a set of things that go together. I think they are a set of things that go together. Um, I think that's a key piece of this, and I don't like the idea of excluding it. Other questions? Discussion? In that case, I'm going to call this motion for a vote. All those in favor of the motion as made, please state aye. Aye. We, could we get a show of hands? Okay, we have four votes for. All those opposed? No. 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 I believe that is five, so that motion fails. Do we have another motion? Um, yes. It is remarkably quiet tonight. <laughs> okay. I will move that we forward um, this to the council in its entirety, the recommendation that it be approved. We have a second. Second. We have a motion and a, a second discussion. Um, just a question, should we have the, uh, all that wording that typically goes with these LDO? In other words, would you want to amend the motion? I'll, I'll rephrase my motion. <laughs> okay. Um, I move that we forward LDO amendment uh, round 24 to town council with recommendation for approval as it is consistent with the comprehensive plan and other applicable plans and is reasonable and in the public interest for the reasons set forth in staff report and presentation. We have a second with that sure. revised motion. We have a motion and a second discussion. <clears throat> I'll state one more time. We have talked about this for a while, so this is not a new discussion. It isn't that we uh, haven't considered it. Um, I'll, I'll just make a comment that uh, I appreciate all the work that I know staff has put into this, and I do understand that this is temporary in nature, and I uh, we'll want to make sure that I, I think all of us are, are very adamant about that, that it is temporary in nature. Uh, we know that this is uh, the good in, in the, the hopes of finding the perfect at some point down the road, but for right now, I'm more than happy to vote for the good. I think this is a, a, a good first step, and uh, I'll support it. Other comments? I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and support the motion. Um, I've already stated my objections, but um, I do. I do think we're missing an opportunity to to do more with it. And I think that the reason staff brings things to us um, with their recommendation is for us to vet that out. And I, I don't like the idea of just taking every recommendation staff makes. So I think um, we've got a a bigger responsibility. So I will support the motion though because I think on balance it's it's going to be the best thing for the town. Other comments? Well, I'll close out by saying that um, I'm not entirely confident that this is perfect, but I think uh, my concerns are mitigated to a considerable extent by the fact that we're going to probably come back and redo this. I think given the amount of time that we had to come up with this, it's it's really pretty good for a stopgap solution. Um, I think we can live with it for six to nine months while we do a much deeper dive. And I really like the idea that this gives us the flexibility to dig into it. And it also creates a little bit more certainty from some our, for some of our developers and property owners who are left in limbo right now if we don't 
do something uh, at this juncture. So yeah, I'm going to support the motion as well because I think uh, it's important we do something. Other comments? In that case, I'm going to call the vote. All those in favor of the motion as stated, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? That motion carries unanimously. I believe that's the last item on our agenda. We may get on in one of the shortest meetings we've ever had. Um, being there no new, new or old business, um, can I get a motion for adjournment? So moved. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Can we have a motion and a second? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries unanimously. Thank you very much. This has been a production of Cary TV. Visit the Town of Cary's website at townofcary.org.